Stephanie's Vintage Fairy Tale. I'm so happy that you guys could be here with me today. I've been planning a garden party for a while now and I'm going to be sharing with you guys the DIYs for our tablescape, some vintage invitations, we're going to upcycle some chairs, and then make sure you guys stay tuned for part two which will be coming in a couple of weeks. I'll be sharing with you guys the whole process of creating a garden party. So the tablescape, how to um, lay everything out, your food, the floral arranging. It's going to be super exciting so you guys do not want to miss that. So please like and subscribe for that video and everything to do with heart family and home as well. I would be absolutely honored if you would consider being a part of our fairy tale family here on YouTube. So thank you so much for watching and let's get into the DIYs. Okay, so for the first DIYs, I found these thrifted chairs off of Facebook Marketplace and I really wanted to give them some new life so you guys can kind of see here how I've transformed them, a little bit of a sneak peek. But I kind of wanted to make them a little bit different but still coordinate together. So I can't wait to show you guys how they turned out. I'm going ahead and just mixing up some chalk paint here, just a nice uh, warm creamy color. I gave my chairs a thorough cleaning because they were pretty dusty <laughs> when I first got them. And then I'm just going in and um, giving them a good coat of paint. I think I did around two to three coats just to make sure that it was fully covered. I love the wood on this chair. It was so pretty. It's a beautiful um, real oak wood and you'll see later I'm going to distress it so that you can still see that gorgeous wood coming through. And then you can see on the seat here, the chalk paint cracked a lot, which looks really pretty and vintage. I love how that turned out. <laughs> and then here you can see how I've gone and distressed it with a sanding block and kind of um, sanded it where the raised edges are just to give it a really good texture. And then I did the same thing on the seat as well and then the rungs and the legs of the chair as well to give it a really Victorian rustic look. And then for our second chair, this is also another wooden chair that I picked up off of Facebook Marketplace. And I had these gorgeous napkins that I'm going to be using for the tablescape actually. And I wanted to incorporate them onto the chair. So what I'm doing is I'm just grabbing the napkins and taking off of the back layer just to make sure that it doesn't bunch when I'm going ahead and applying the Mod Podge. And then I'm applying a generous coat to the seat just to make sure that it's got a good layer there. And then going ahead and adding my napkin on top. The key here is to not rub the napkin, just to kind of pat it down, just because the napkin is very thin, so you don't want to rip it. You can kind of see I did rip it in a one spot, but since it is a vintage chair, it's um, kind of the look I'm going for anyway, so don't worry about it if you accidentally get a little tear in your napkins. So here you can see the drying process. It's kind of um, a little bit white cast, but once it dries down, it will dry clear and then you'll just see the gorgeous napkins. And then depending on what kind of chair you guys have, you can choose where you want to apply your napkins and your Mod Podge. I'm only applying it in specific areas because I really want this natural wood to show through. It was so beautiful. So I'm just applying it on the, the back of the chair and then the seat and then leaving the rest of the chair wood so it kind of has that rustic feel but also very glam with these really pretty napkins. And then here on the napkins, they had a really pretty border. And what I did was I cut it out and then I wanted to apply it to the small parts of the chair rungs just to give it a little bit more dimension. You can kind of see on the top of each rung there, I've applied the little trim. And now that the napkins have dried, I'm going ahead and just peeling off the edges just to make sure that I don't have any rough corners. And then I'll at the end take a sanding block just to make sure that I get those rough edges off. So 
So this is our next DIY. This was another chair that I got off Marketplace, and this one was actually free, which was awesome. I love the fabric of it. It was a really nice neutral pinky beige with some gold accents, but I really didn't like the dark wood. It just kind of clashed with the fabric on the chair. I wanted to kind of make this chair look a little bit regal, very, very glam and girly, so I'm painting it pink <laughs> using a pink chalk paint that I mixed up with some cream and then some um, acrylic paint as well to kind of get the color I was going for. I really wanted this chair to be a little bit different, something very girly and glam that would coordinate in with the fabric, but would also be a little bit different than the other chairs that I have. Still coordinating, but still slightly different. And then with this paint, I believe I did two or three coats as well, just to make sure that I got a really good layer over the really dark wood that was here originally. And I did some tape around the seat cushions as well, just to make sure that I didn't get any paint along the fabric. All right, so now I wanted to kind of bring in a little bit more gold. You can kind of see on the fabric that the leaves are quite um, a yellowy gold. So I wanted to take some uh, thin champagne paint that I got from Michaels and just apply that to the raised parts of the chair just to bring in that more regal aspect that I was kind of going for with this look. So I'm just applying it to the top of the chair right where the, uh, the gold trimming is here. Let me know in the comments down below what was your favorite chair. I love them all so much. I can't decide. <laughs> they were so much fun to create. Alright, so I got some lace fabric off of Amazon actually, and I'm going to be using this for my tablecloth, and it was quite a stark white when I got it, and it was a little bit too bright for me. I was kind of going for more of a vintage look like you guys have been seeing, so what I wanted to do is just to dye it with some tea, just to give it a little bit more of that aged effect. So I'm just going in with some warm water and a couple of tea bags, and then adding my fabric in. This was a polyester material, and it took the tea really well. I only needed to leave it in for maybe an hour or so, and it got a really good color. So here's how the lace turned out. I love how it kind of took down a little bit of the shine, gave it more of a romantic vintage feel. I just love this so much more than the stark white. I think it really tones in with my decor. So you guys will have to let me know what you guys think and it was super easy to do. So really love that one. So now we're going to be creating some invitations and I really wanted to go a little bit different with these. So what I did was I printed off just a template off of Google Images of a teapot and I'm just cutting out um, some scrapbook paper that I got from Michaels in a spring colored collection which I really love. But you guys could do any kind of paper that you guys love or if you're doing a totally different party, maybe you're doing a children's party, um, you could do their favorite, you know, superhero character or whatever. You can totally personalize these kind of invitations. So what I'm doing is I'm just tracing out the template here onto my cardstock. I'm adding the cardstock behind the scrapbook paper just to make it a little bit more sturdy. Mm -hmm. 
And now what I'm doing is I'm just going in with some double-sided tape and just adding the two layers together. Again, just to give it a little bit more security and to make it a little bit thicker. And I'm just using a couple different uh, patterns that I chose out of the book. But again, you guys could choose any kind of paper that you guys love. So here's how they turned out. I think they're so cute. I was even thinking after I made these that they would make a really good garland. If you just took a hole punch and then put some burlap through, you could totally hang these up and make them into a little banner as well. I think that would be a really cute little decor piece for a party. So just another idea that you could use these for, but of course I'm using these for my invitation. So I'm just going ahead and writing a little uh, note on here. You could also put a solid piece of paper in the middle here if you wanted the letters to pop up a little bit more, but I didn't want to take away from the print. So that's why I kind of left it this way. But again, if you would prefer to have the letters a little bit more noticeable, feel free to put a little piece of paper in the middle there. And now what I'm doing here is I just wanted to kind of uh, make these a little bit more rustic, a little bit more vintage. So I'm just taking some brown acrylic paint and just distressing the edges just to kind of give it a little bit more of a romantic feel. Okay, so for the next one, I'm super excited about this one. I was really inspired by those kind of wonky signs that you see in the old fashioned Alice in Wonderland. And I wanted something that I could put outside in my garden that would be close to our party. So I found these uh, Dollar Tree signs. They were just uh, wooden pieces that I'm gonna go ahead and paint with some more of the chalk paint, just in a really neutral beige color. And with this, I did have to give it quite a few coats because the lime green was very bright. So I did have to kind of uh, give it five or six coats just to make sure that I covered up all of the letters. So these are the letters that we're going to be using. I have some rub-on transfers and then I have some stickers as well. And we're going to be using these on our sign today. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and place the signs just kind of um, to see how I want to lay them out. Not sticking anything down yet, just kind of playing around to get the right shape. And now I'm just taking my hot glue gun and just um, adding a little bit of uh, hot glue just to secure those down. So now I'm going to go in with our words. I'm just writing out some cute little signs, again inspired by Alice in Wonderland, but you could put kind of whatever you wanted on here. I'm going with a white rabbit on the top here, so that was really cute. Tea party. And then Wonderland on the bottom. So this is how it's looking so far. I think it's super cute, uh, but it definitely needed something else just to kind of make it sing a little bit more. So I'm going in with some rub-on transfers now using those really pretty leaves and the flowers just to kind of give it a little bit more of um, the garden feel that I'm going for. And these are super easy to use. I got these from Dollar Tree. You just peel off the back and stick them on and then you just um, rub them a little bit and they peel right off. They're super easy to use and I feel like they just make such a statement on the sign. And you could use these for so many different crafts, scrapbooking, all sorts of things. I just absolutely love these. So this is how it's looking with all of the rub-on transfers applied. I think it's so cute. It's so glam and girly, but also really fun and whimsical. I really love how this turned out. 
and now I'm just going in with some more brown acrylic paint just to distress the edges to make it a little bit more of a vintage feel to go with the glam. So this is how I styled it outside in our garden. I love how this looks in my lavender plant. It's so cute. <laughs> you guys will have to let me know if you guys love this or if you've tried anything like this. It was so much fun to create and I have so many ideas for different kind of styles or different ones you could use that for. So now we're going to make some really pretty coasters with the same scrapbook paper that we used earlier. I'm just using some wooden uh, coaster sets that I got from the dollar store, the same paper that we used previously, that way we don't waste anything, and then some Mod Podge. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going ahead and tracing out my wooden coasters to get the right shape, and then we'll cut them out. So I'm making six of these because that's how many guests that we're going to have at our party. But you could make as many of these as you wanted and you could even do um, different paper. You don't have to do them all the same like I'm doing here. And now I'm just going ahead and applying my Mod Podge. I'm applying a pretty generous layer because I find that the wood really absorbs the Mod Podge. So you want to make sure you give yourself a decent coat and then go ahead and apply your scrapbook paper right on top. And then make sure you press it down just to make sure you get any air bubbles out. And it's really important as well to apply a layer of Mod Podge on top as well just to make sure that you seal it all in and then if you get any condensation from your glass or your teacup or whatever you're putting on these that it just keeps the paper protected. So this is how they're looking so far. I think they're so beautiful. This is one of my favorite scrapbook papers that I've gotten from Michaels. I just absolutely love this look. And now I'm just gonna kind of give it a finishing touch with some gold acrylic paint. This is a really pretty champagne color. It's very sheer, so it goes on very light. It just kind of gives a little dusting of color. It's not a super dark gold, which I really like. So it still adds a touch of glam, but it's not too much. And I'm just going around with a light hand, kind of like a dry brushing technique, just around the corners, just to give it a little bit of dimension. All right, so for our next DIY, this is a super easy, fun DIY that you can use for your food, actually. So I'm just going ahead and tracing out a cute little flag. Um, no rhyme or reason here, just freehanding a design that I like. And then we're just going to go ahead and uh, cut them out. So what I'm doing here is I'm just grabbing a couple of toothpicks and some more double-sided tape and applying a little layer just on the side here. And then go ahead and add in your toothpick and another piece of double-sided tape. You could use hot glue for this as well, but I find it dries pretty lumpy, so I prefer the double-sided tape just to give it a more seamless effect. And then go ahead and roll the piece around the toothpick just to make sure you get a nice clean edge. And here's how it looks. Super easy. Very fun to make. You could do this with kids and you could totally personalize these for any kind of event or party or wedding or whatever you're using them for. You can switch up the paper as well. I decided to go for a solid here just because I have a lot of print <laughs> going on with this tablescape already. So, And I wanted the uh, lettering to show as well. So I'm just using a plain paper here. But of course you could adapt these to any kind of style that you guys are going for. So 
So now I'm going to go in with a micron pen here and just write on some really cute little witty phrases. Again, kind of going with an Alice in Wonderland theme, but you could also put any sort of thing on here. You could put the titles of the food or you could put names or um, fun sayings like I'm doing whatever you guys love. And then the last step here is I wanted to go ahead and distress the edges again with some gold paint just to tie everything together. And I'm going in with just a really light hand here, not adding too much, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of dimension. So now we're going to go ahead and make some little personalized name cards, again with the similar supplies, the scrapbook paper, micron pen, and then some gold paint to do the distressing. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cutting out some rectangle shapes. You can choose whatever size that you guys want. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a smaller box to go in the middle of the bigger one. I measured about half a size to get the dimension for this one, and I'm just going ahead and cutting that out as well. So now I'm just kind of positioning them together just to see how they look. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm making six of these because that's how many guests we're having. So I'm just using the existing template that I cut out to cut out a few more. And then you can make as many of these as you guys need. And then I'm doing the same thing with the bigger template, cutting them out again. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our double-sided tape and go ahead and attach them together. And then you're going to go ahead and fold them together. Just matching up your corners. And here's how it looks. Super easy, really cute, and you can totally personalize these with any kind of paper or design you guys are going for. And now I'm just going ahead with my Micron pen and just adding in our names. So the last step here is we're going to go ahead and distress the edges with that same gold uh, champagne paint.
I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I've had so much fun sharing with you guys these DIYs for my garden party. And make sure you stay tuned. For a couple of weeks, I'm going to be showing you the actual garden party, how we style our table, we do our florals, the food, how we use all of these DIYs. I can't wait to take you guys along and share with you the whole process. So make sure you like and subscribe so that you stay tuned for that video. I can't wait to share with you guys so much more crafting and decorating as the seasons come. Uh, thank you guys so much for being here. I absolutely love being able to share my love of creativity and crafting with you all. I hope you guys are loving it. So please comment down below with what your favorite DIY was today. And I'll see you guys very soon in my next video for the garden party. Love you guys so much. Take care. Bye.